Now, to answer this question in a very simple way, diabetic emergencies are of two types. One is hypoglycemia, which means your sugar has gone down below 70 mg per deciliter. And another is uncontrolled sugars, where, where it means your sugar is more than 500 mg per deciliter. Now, as far as hypoglycemia is concerned, it presents itself with trembling, confusional state, lots of perspiration, and uh, abnormal behavior by the patient. In such context, you immediately check the sugar with a glucometer. If it is less than 70 mg per deciliter, you start treating the patient at home before rushing the patient to the hospital. Now, as far as treatment is concerned, give him sugar. How much sugar are you going to give him? Give one tablespoon of sugar, give one tablespoon of honey, or give one glass of juice. It will instantaneously raise the blood sugar values and the patient will start behaving normally. Here, after 15 minutes, again check the sugar and if it's again less than 70, repeat the same process. Once you have stabilized the sugar and the patient is fine, you check the sugar every one or two hours just to confirm that the sugars are in the normal limits. So this is how you treat diabetic hypoglycemia. Another complication is diabetic hyperglycemia where your sugars are extremely high. In this context, you cannot treat it at home. You need to visit your nearest endocrinologist or a diabetologist or your nearest treating physician. He will adjust the doses of insulin or the oral drugs what you are taking for diabetes. You need to treat it on time because the diabetes which is extremely high can lead to a lot of complications like kidney failure, heart disease, strokes and so and so forth. So do not take it lightly, treat it on time and treat it properly. How does diabetic affect females? This is very very important. In diabetics, if a female is a diabetic, she is more prone to develop heart diseases. Four times more commoner than males. Now, if a uh, diabetic patient, female, develops heart disease, it can lead to more severe complication as compared to their male counterparts. That's why identifying and treating heart disease in a diabetic female is very, very important. Secondly, a diabetic can have effect a profound effect on a pregnant lady. If a diabetic patient becomes pregnant, we have to manage the sugars very well to prevent any labor related or post labor complications. Thirdly, there is some term known as gestational diabetes mellitus which means a lady is diagnosed with diabetes during her pregnancy. Now, gestational diabetes has to be treated with insulins and medications otherwise they can have complications in the baby. The baby can be delivered preterm, a baby can be large, there will be more chance of getting a caesarean section done in a diabetic patient. So diabetes overall has got long and varied effect on a female, female patient. Other important thing is blindness because a diabetes is very commoner in female as compared to male. Depression is another problem which is more commoner in female as compared to male diabetics. So this all factors have to be taken care of when we are treating diabetes in a female patients. Role of medical adherence in treatment of diabetes mellitus. Now this is very very important. If a diabetic patient doesn't take medicines on time, he can develop, he or she can develop long term complications and lots and lots of problems. So, I, whenever I see a patient diabetic, I see to it that I hammer it into the patient's brain that taking the medicine on time is very, very important. There are a lot of barriers why a patient is not adherent to a treatment schedule. First important barrier is laziness and non awareness of importance of taking the medicines on time. So I hammer it to them that they have to take the medicine on time, same time, same every day on the same time. Second, I try to try to teach them how to balance the medicine with meals. It's very important in diabetic patients. 
So they, I tell them how to take it 20 minutes before a major meal. All most of the diabetic medications are given before meals. So I tell them how to take it before meals. Thirdly, cost is a big issue. So many times the medicines are very expensive. So patients just tend to forget about the medicine because they cannot afford it. So I try to help them by sometimes giving them generic medication which they can sometimes afford and try to not miss out the doses. Fourth, I try to help the patient by explaining them or telling them about the diabetes calendar and diabetic pill containers. So diabetic calendars are basically a excel sheet where they return the tablet forms and the doses schedule which is kept near the patient's pill bottle and they can record it whenever they take the medication. Secondly, I also advocate them to buy a medicine pill container which are small plastic boxes which where it's written morning, afternoon, evening and they can put the tablets inside the slots. So that way they can be more compliant with the medication. If they are not adherent to diabetic medication, they can develop long term complications like kidney failure, hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, heart disease, strokes and so and so forth. So explaining them about adherence to a proper treatment protocol is very very important as important as explaining them about diet and exercise in a diabetic patient. should I eat? Now this is a very very important question. I need to, I usually sit down with them for at least for 5 minutes and describe and explain them what diet they should follow if they are diabetic. Now we all know diet is divided into protein, carbs and carbohydrates. So as far as diabetes is concerned, the carbohydrate has to be restricted to less than 40% of the diet. Fat should form at least 25-30% to of the diet and rest 25% should be from your protein source. Carbs are going to naturally increase the blood sugar values. So when we explain diet to the patient, we try to contain the carbs. Uh, when I advocate a diet to a diabetic patient, my diet is very very simple. First, I try to tell them to have a better or a larger part of the meal should be the breakfast and the lunch. And a very smaller part of the meal should be your dinner. I try to divide the meals into six parts if they are comfortable with it. If not, then three major meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Breakfast I tell them to, if they are a non-veg, I tell them to eat one egg white, little poha or upma, one cup of tea or coffee without sugar or sugar substitute and brown bread. That is what is allowed in a diet. After that, between the lunch and the breakfast, I tell them to have a fruit. One of the fruit is allowed, either an apple, a mosambi or a papaya, only one of it. If it's a papaya, it has to be very one small piece of papaya, not the whole papaya as such. After that, I tell them to have lunch, which consists of two or three, two and a half chapatis, a lot of vegetables, a lot of green leafy vegetables, salads, and uh, dal. I tell them to avoid rice if possible. If not, I tell advocate them to have brown rice. Brown rice has got a lower glycemic index and would not change the sugar values to a very large extent. After the lunch, I tell them to have an evening snack. Snack should be uh, something like mari biscuit with a tea, half a cup of tea or a black tea or a green tea, something like that. And dinner should be very very light, maybe one, one and a half chapati, lots of salads, soups and vegetables. That's what my usual ideal plan for a diabetics. I tell them not to have meat. I allow them to have chicken once in 10 to 15 days and ask them to have fish once or two times a week, that's it. And not too much of uh, other uh, uh, red meat is allowed to them. So this is a basic or basic guideline or a basic plan. I also tell them to have less salt because most of the diabetes have got coexistent hypertension. So I tell them to eat, eat very very less salt and eat very less oil in whatever food which is being cooked at their home. of diabetes and eye problem it is very very important eye infection is very common in a diabetic patient who is not controlled so first of all I tell, tell my patient that you need to control your diabetes well 
if you don't do it you are going to land up in complications high related complications as per the statistics and data around the world almost 25 times a diabetic patient is more to de- pro- pro- to develop a high complications so controlling the sugar is the only mantra to prevent any high complications there are three high complications which are common in a diabetic patient first they develop retinopathy retina is a layer of eye eyeball which is inside the inner part of the eye which makes us and which allows us to see things so if they develop retinopathy they develop blindness they develop blurring vision they cannot see properly so to protect them from retinopathy they have to control the sugar perfectly second known complication of diabetes in eye is early cataract formation usually we all know cataract happen when you are 60 60 plus but in a diabetic patient cataracts can happen very early on maybe only also at the age of 45 50 so to prevent that they have to control their sugar third commonest complication of diabetes along with eye is glaucoma glaucoma is when the blood when the pressure inside the eyes elevated that is known as glaucoma glaucoma itself can lead to blindness so controlling sugar is a very very important benchmark in preventing all the different eye complications in a diabetic patients